Well, hello everybody, and welcome to BricsCAD in 20 minutes. So, in the next 19 and a half minutes, what's our goal? Our goal is to help you move from your current CAD program to BricsCAD. And the idea is by giving you uh, just some short introductions to the features in BricsCAD to help you be more comfortable and more productive with your 30-day trial version of BricsCAD. Um, I'm Don Strimbo. With me is my good friend, Mr. Matt Olding. Hello. And, hey, Matt. How's it going today? Good. Awesome. Awesome. On the agenda today, Matt's going to take you through a couple critical areas uh, to help you get BricsCAD uh, set up just the way that makes the make makes you uh, makes you happy. Um, he'll show you how to customize the user interface, um, set up your support paths. Uh, Matt's going to show you the, the the comprehensive settings dialog in BricsCAD, which is a really powerful tool that brings all of the settings in the program into one single searchable dialog box. It's pretty powerful. Uh, he'll show you the Drawing Explorer functionality inside of BricsCAD and then end up with a, with a brief tutorial on the Quad Cursor, which is the head-up display functionality in BricsCAD that brings all of the commands, uh, context-sensitive commands, directly to the point of your cursor. So with that, Matt, how are we doing? Are we ready to get started showing people BricsCAD? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Don. And hey, welcome, folks. Uh, basically, like Don was saying, our goal is today to get you comfortable and productive fast as possible with BricsCAD. And with that said, let's just start up the product and see what you get. Um, once you start up the product, the first thing you're going to see is the welcome screen or getting started screen. And from here, you can open up a new drawing, uh, start from a template. You have these uh, preset profiles that we're going to talk a little bit later on about. But also, too, if you don't want to see this screen again, there's a little toggle down here. You could toggle it off or on if you don't want to see the welcome screen. If we go into the preset profiles, basically these are work uh, uh, spaces that you can use and change and change and go into. And we'll talk about those a little bit more when we get into the product. Under what's new, this is actually the release notes. Uh, then also too, we do have online tutorials, oodles of them that you can go up and learn the product a little bit more. But with that said, let's just start a new drawing and get into BricsCAD. Here it is. Here's the standard UI for uh, BricsCAD. This is what you get out of the box. And what I'm going to do is walk you through on how to customize this UI to the way you like to work, or basically how I like to work. And uh, so I'm going to step you through that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Settings and go to the Settings dialog box. Now, we're going to talk more about the Settings dialog box later on. But right here, I'm going to type in BK. It's a little shortcut for background color. And I'm going to change mine to black. And then, like I said earlier, the settings dialog box we're going to talk more about. Uh, then from here, the one thing I really recommend that everybody do as soon as they get BricsCAD is open up some of your current DWG files that you're working on. I'm going to open up these nine that I have here and watch the speed and performance of BricsCAD. It's quick. It's really quick, which is a nice, uh, <laughs> very nice to know. And keep in mind, BricsCAD reads and writes 2018 DWG files. And as you can see, I'm just tabbing through uh, the nine files that I opened up. The next thing you want to do, we all do it. We have to zoom in and zoom out. And I'm just using my wheel mouse here. Uh, to zoom in and out, but also too, if you notice, there is a command line, and in there, I'm just going to use a shortcut called, you know, Z for zoom. One thing you're going to notice a little difference, you're going to get this floating option uh, box, and you can move that around, put that anywhere you want to, especially just your options, and you can just click onto extents, and there you get zoom extents. Another thing you're going to notice inside of BrooksCAD once you start uh, moving your mouse around or your cursor around is the quad cursor. Now this quad cursor, I'm going to leave it up. I'm going to talk more about it here a little bit and later on, uh, but it's a 
very powerful tool and I think it's one of the neatest things that you could uh, it, since a CAD system in a long time that you could use. You can toggle it off and on down here at the, at the status bar, but I recommend leaving it on. Okay, now let's get back to customizing our user interface. Now from here, I talked about uh, these uh, work uh, groups, basically works uh, spaces, and we have five default ones. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of the 2D drafting one, just typing in workspace. And from here, I'm gonna save this current workspace, give it a new name. And then from here, we're gonna start modifying this uh, to our needs basically. So I called it other CAD and you could see up here, I have it listed as other CAD along with the other workspaces. Now let's do this. Now let's start customizing this. I'm gonna type in toolbars, the command line, and I'm gonna actually turn them off or hide them. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the ribbon. I really like the ribbon, so I'm gonna have it up. And then from here on the ribbon, I can right mouse click and I'm gonna turn off the command line. And then the same thing with the property panel. And the last thing I'm gonna do here is the menu bars at the very top. Now there, we're getting to the environment that I'm used to working in. And from here, there's one more thing I do want to add on. And BricsCAD has oodles and oodles of uh, toolbars. And there's one toolbar I do want to have up, and that's the draw toolbar. And as you can see, it docked it over here on the left-hand side. OK, now this is the environment that I like having. Now, if you want to get back to the default user interface, just click on 2D Drafting. In from the status bar down here, and you can go to these different workspaces. Like here's the BIM workspace, if you want to check that out. And if you want to get to the one that you just customize, I'm going to click onto other CAD, and there it is. Okay, that quick, that simple, and that easy to customize your, your user interface with Brooks CAD. And Don, with that, do you have any comments? Yeah, I, I Matt, I, I, I think that um, it's, it's, Pretty pretty good uh, introduction to getting your screen set up the way you like it. Uh, I mean, um, one of the things I think that that, that the CAD users are really um, uh, put a lot of, of, of effort into is is getting their work environment set up in a way that makes them comfortable, so they know where all the tools are, they know how to get to everything as quickly as possible, and. Uh, you know, I think he showed us in about five minutes there, it's, it's pretty easy to get BricsCAD to look, not only look the way you want it, but you can also set up a pro set profile so you can save those settings and, and you'll have a consistent uh, uh, UI every time you log in. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Okay, now the next thing I want to take you guys into is the settings dialog box. Let's talk about that a little bit more and some key things that we should look at when you first start up and that you should set. And the one is your support file search paths. Now, one powerful thing about this dialog box is if you don't know the variable or the uh, setting, you could just type it in here at the top and we go right to our support file search paths. In here, these are the default ones that come with a Bricks CAD, but I recommend adding in your custom list routines, your third party apps, or like I'm doing here is your DWG files where they're located. The next area that you should look at inside of here is your printer or your plotters. If, especially if you're on a network, you wanna make sure your support files are set for that. And then same thing with your template files if you do have any template files make sure they're all set here and it's quick and it's very easy now with this dialog box there is 954 variables or settings that you can change or modify now like right here under dimensions i could change the arrowheads if i need to um, you know tons of different options that you could change and modify like under drawing if i want to do different unit lengths. I could bring that up and do feet versus inches, you know, centimeters, meters. And then if you work for NASA, we even have light years for you. Uh, 
So once again, 954 uh, settings in here, one dialog box versus that other CAD product where you have to get into multiple dialog boxes to uh, get at these settings. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is the Drawing Explorer. You're going to see this and you're going to run into it, so I'm just going to show you what it is here briefly. And I like to describe this as your Drawing Control Center. Okay, from here, you can see all your object definitions and work with them across all your open drawings. Okay, so like you can see your layers, your layer states, your, your basically your text styles, your dimension styles. So many, all the options that you, you know, inside of your drawing, you can see here, even like your blocks, you get a little preview also too of your blocks from down here on, on the bottom. And also too, if you want to just insert a new block, you can do that simple and easy just from the drawing explorer. Now, one of the powerful things I like about the drawing explorer is this here, I have a dimension style. And I want this in another, I want to use it in another drawing. All I need to do is to drag and drop it. And there we go. We have it in this other drawing. It, that quick, that easy, and that simple. And you could do that with your blocks, your layers, your line types, uh, any of these drawing definitions, you can drop and drag from one to another drawing. So, and then also too, just simple, easy things like uh, for layers, I just want to type in the wall and it brings up all the wall layers and I can see those, turn them off and on uh, and so forth. So the drawing explorer, take advantage of it. Now let's get into back to customizing a little bit more uh, and we're going to bring up the customized dialog box, our CUI. And in here, the CUI, basically you can, you know, see everything that we can customize basically from these tabs. And like this one, the command aliases. Now I love using shortcuts, you know, or command aliases on the keyboard. And like here, if you want to change or modify one, like if you don't want C to be circle, let's just change that to be copy. Simple and easy, very simple and easy. Under uh, tablets, if you have a tablet, set that up. You're right, you're your mouse, if you want to click your right mouse click, left mouse click on your mouse, you can change that, modify that from here. Same thing with your menus. If you want to add or delete anything from your menu files, your toolbars, change those around, even the ribbon that you, uh, that if you use the ribbon, you can change and modify this around. So take advantage of this customized dialog box. Once again, it's one dialog box that has it all versus the other CAD product where it's multiple dialog boxes. Okay, so the settings, the drawing explorer, and the customization dialog box. Take advantage of those and, uh, and modify it to your needs and everything for BricsCAD. And Don, do you have any comments? No, just kidding. No. Yeah, of course I do. Of course I do. How well do you know me, Matt? So, so I, I think one thing I really want to um, to stress is that Drawing Explorer, uh, such a powerful tool. Um, you know, it, it's it 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 lets you access all the metadata in all of the open drawings in BricsCAD. You can you can change that data as as Matt showed you guys. You can copy. Uh, information back and forth between all the open drawings you have. That's that's a pretty amazing tool. And if you work with a lot of layers, you can also set the layers panel of the Drawing Explorer as a non-modal dialog. If you have multiple screens, you can move that layers panel onto the second screen and have full access to all of your layer functions while you're working uh, um, on, on your primary screen. So, so a lot of power in Drawing Explorer and, uh, and, and a lot more functionality to, to learn about once you actually get your hands on BricsCAD. Cool. Well, hey, thanks, Don. Okay, now the last topic I want to talk about is the quad cursor. Okay, and with the quad cursor, imagine having the entire command system located directly on your mouse and and basically the quad, it incorporates drawing, editing, modified commands, all in that single cursor. 
So the quad, it has three different stages, okay, or states I like to call it. And basically this is the first one, is basically I'm hovering over a line, tells me it's a line, tells me the last thing I did with a line, which is match properties. And then it tells me all this information, such as what the tooltip, uh, what layer it's on and so forth. So the power of the quad, if I roll over it, this is the second stage of the quad. It lets me know all the recent commands that I just did on the line. And the third stage is basically the command groups themselves. So under edit, modify, draw, and select. So these are all the commands I could use on a line. And yes, you can customize this to your needs and I highly recommend it. And I'm gonna show you that here in a few minutes. Uh, but the power of the quad, I think it's one of the best improvements in a CAD system in a very long time that I've seen. And I'm a shortcut person, and uh, I like using the quad after I got used to it. I'd much rather use the quad than actually uh, using my shortcut commands. And yes, you can toggle it off and on down here, and same thing with the rollover tooltips on the status bar. But let's do this. Let's show you how to use the quad, okay? So here's an elevator shaft, and I just want to add a dimension to this. And from using the quad, I'm just going to hover over this line, see my recent commands, and pick on dimension, and boom, there we go. We dement you know, added a dimension. As you notice, this men's restroom, I need more toilets. Okay, so I'm just going to do a copy insert using all the quad, no shortcut commands at all here. And let's do the same thing for these doors. I'm just going to do a copy insert and basically boom, I've done it just using the quad fast and quick and easy. Now, one of the powerful things that I do love about the quad and the rollover tooltips is this. I'm getting this information about this. It's a block reference. As you can see, it's on the wrong layer. So let's put it on the correct layer. So I'm going to go hover over this door. That's the layer I wanted to be on. So I'm just going to match properties using the quad and simple and easy, boom, 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 I match the properties to those doors. So the quad, it's, to me, once you get used to it, you'll never go back to shortcut commands. Now, let's go to another drawing and show you some different stuff with a quad. If I do a, a no selection, basically I'm not hovering over anything, I get a few different options with a quad. And the one I like is called clean screen. Now watch this. My ribbon's gone, my toolbars are gone, and I feel like I have the world's biggest piece of paper here. <laughs> Let's zoom in to this fire exit, and uh, I want to add a hatch to this. So just with the quad, I can pat, you know, hover over this uh, boundary, go in, modify, add a hatch, and change it, all without using my keyboard, okay? Now, if I look at it, Guess what? It's on the wrong layer, so let's match its properties. Simple and easy using the quad. So starting trying to incorporate the quad into your workflow, and your current workflow, uh, and believe me, you'll start loving it. Yes, now customization. Let's get into customizing the quad. You can change the width of the quad, the icon size, the delay time from when it pops up and goes away. All this you can change with the quad and, and to your needs and to your likings. So for customizing it in the settings dialog box. The next area is customizing these items, okay? So the way how you want to see the quad come up. So like under edit, you know, if I don't want to see all these edit commands here, I can actually delete some of them or add in some if I want to. Uh, so those capabilities are there for the quad. If for the tabs or for those command groups, uh, you can go in here, you can modify and change those also just by a simple right mouse click and I can add and modify uh, any of these if, you know, to my needs, to my likings. So the quad, once again, imagine having the entire command system located directly on your mouse cursor. Take advantage of it and start incorporating into your workflow. That's my recommendation. And Don, with that, do you have any comments about the quad cursor? Yeah, you know, um, I've been using CAD for, for a couple of years now, uh, pretty close to 35. 
Wow, that's uh, I started that really young. I started really young, you guys. But I, I think that the thing that is really important about the quad is is if if you are an AutoCAD user, you probably want to just turn it off because it's something that seems obtrusive to 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 your workflow. I will challenge all of you to take a couple extra minutes and work with the quad when you see how that context sensitive nature actually affects your workflow you're gonna love it and and you know the other thing i think matt showed you briefly when when you're not hovering over an entity and you right click and you're in the no selection state there's a complete different set of commands available so even if you don't customize the quad at all you can use it out of the box there's a ton of power in that product so um here on the screen, you can see some links to some different assets that we make available for all of you for no charge. In the ebooks box, uh, you'll see hyperlinks to Ralph Grabowski's BricsCAD for AutoCAD users, which has been updated to uh, version 18 of BricsCAD. The inside BricsCAD book, which is for new users, people who are new to CAD, who are just coming to BricsCAD for the first time. Uh, and uh, Customizing Bricks Cab, which is a comprehensive uh, book, a couple hundred page ebook on all of the different ways that you can customize Bricks Cab. Remember, even the lowest cost version of Bricks Cab has full Lisp capabilities, and most all of your Lisp routines that you've used in other CAD systems will load directly and run in Bricks Cab. Um, the product pages are in the box right next to it. Pages for BricsCAD, BIM, Sheet Metal, Communicator, Shape, our CDE 24-7, and of course the BricsCAD blog where our good friend Heidi Hewitt is taking you on a journey uh, from uh, her vantage point of, of, of several decades of AutoCAD use, she's taking you to BricsCAD in a very systematic and, and detailed way. So please come and enjoy the future of DWG. We, we really feel that, that we have a product that, that can make your life uh, easier and can make it more fun to actually do the work you do every day. Um, why not work with a product that really thinks the way that you do. It's BricsCAD. With that, everybody, I'd like to thank you for your time. We went a minute over, but I hope everybody's okay with that. If you need help, give us a call here in the U.S., 833-BRICSIS. We'll be glad to help you out any way we can. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, and thanks for joining us, folks.